AC is passing to the west of New Caledonia as a Category 1 equivalent storm on the Sapphire Simpson scale. Uh, that's winds of around 85 miles per hour right now, 135 kilometers per hour sustained, 20.4 south, 163.1 degrees east is its current position at 11 p.m. in Noumea this February the 11th. Moving south, uh, CDPS Stage 2 as well. This storm brushing past the islands. This could have been a much worse situation for the island of New Caledonia. CDPS Stage 2. Um, that's because the winds on land are not going to be particularly high. I don't think we're going to see much hurricane force winds. Uh, only tropical storm force at this point. With rainfall amounts probably reaching around 3 inches, uh, 75 millimetres. That's additional rainfall than what's already been seen, of course. Uh, here it is right now, then, again, with that wind field, larger wind field on the eastern side. So tropical storm force winds could be widespread over parts of New Caledonia. Cyclone warning in effect now as far east as Point Dimi, uh, where uh, that's around se uh, central part of the island. Um, no cyclone watches in effect anymore because everywhere is now under the warning zone. The storm won't drift any further east. So here's how we've reached the conclusion of the sustained winds with the JTWC. Fiji slightly lower at 75 miles per hour. The ADT has dropped off for some reason down to 60 miles per hour on both NOAA and SSEC. Um, so that's interesting, but it certainly looks like a Category 1 storm on satellite imagery, which we'll see shortly. You can see it there, it's going to speed off towards the southwest over the Coral Sea over the next few days. Will probably remain tropical for some time, could still be tropical by the time it um, makes its closest approach to Sydney, Australia uh, on day 3 although it will probably be turning post-tropical and possibly might have done so by then. Nonetheless, rainfall amounts will probably be significant on the Australian east coast, but wind speeds uh, I don't think will be a huge issue. Here it is right now then, you can see the moisture plume associated with this storm. You can see it just about misses the coast of Australia on the GFS model, and uh, some of it does reach New Zealand. The main core of the storm remaining well offshore both of these islands, uh, both of these nations, um, and again you can see it there delivering possibly enhanced rainfall to parts of Queensland more than anywhere really and into northernmost New South Wales uh, with some more further south in the storm's wake. Uh, so that's interesting. Here is the sea surface temperatures then. Uh, fairly warm where the storm is right now. They'll probably last for a good uh, day and a half, two days probably before starting to just about drop underneath the threshold of 26 degrees Celsius, so that's uh, 79 Fahrenheit on that chart. And you can see there expected to remain a hurricane strength system for a good two days on the GFS model before starting to run out of steam there. Uh, but you can still see it's a very potent system, very broad, especially on the eastern side with that wind field. So New Zealand could see some sustained tropical storm conditions, or at least those winds, bearing in mind that it won't be tropical by then. Um, and that could persist for a good day or two when the storm reaches the area late this week over the weekend. Uh, HWRF they're still calling for a Category 2, all the, others, uh, all the other models are down at Category 1. Wind shear is going to start to take a hike very soon, up to 40 knots in the next 24 hours. That will really um, condemn this storm to its demise. Sea surface temperatures will start to fall as well, relative humidity is not going to be an issue for this one. So here it is again on the satellite imagery. Um, not looking that great on the imagery there. Uh, you would expect a lot more cloud coverage on the north and western sides, but uh, it's lacking a bit. Uh, dry air coming in from the west, you can just about make out on the edge of the graphic there. But the central core of the storm seems quite potent in itself, so wind speeds quite clearly into hurricane force winds, well above 120 kilometers per hour sustained winds, higher gusts possibly up to around 150, 160 kilometers per hour. Uh, that's 100 miles per hour, and this storm will start to clear New Caledonia in the next few hours. Now here's the latest from the Joint Typhoon 
warning centre on the tropical cyclone. They have it located 213 nautical miles west northwest of New Mia, New Caledonia. Over the last six hours, this tracked southward at nine knots. Animated enhanced infrared satellite imagery shows the system is starting to feel the influence of vertical wind shear. A bull's eye ASCAT pass provides high confidence in the initial position and the 34 to 50 knot wind radii. The initial intensity of 70 knots is consistent with multi-agency VORAC fixed intensities. The environment is marginally or marginal with excellent poleward outflow, moderate 15 to 20 knot vertical wind shear and 27 to 28 Celsius sea surface temperature. The Cyclone 15P is currently tracking along the western periphery of a north-south oriented subtropical ridge, mid-latitude trough to the southwest. It's also starting to influence the track. In the next few hours, that trough will cause a southwest shift in the track. And as the cyclone tracks more poleward, it will encounter high vertical wind shear and cool to sea surface temperature, causing the intensity to weaken. The cyclone should complete subtropical transition around 72 hours, and after that, the Interaction with the mid latitude wrestlers will cause the track to turn south eastward away from Australia. So that's the latest from the uh, Joint Typhoon Warning Centre. And here's the latest on the cyclone. 21 decimal 6 degrees south, 162 decimal 7 degrees east, wind 75 knots, minimum central pressure around the 972 millibars. Here's a look at the GEF, correction, GEFS track. And it looks like it's going to miss the southeast corner of Queensland but let's see what happens in about 28 hours. Now here's the latest instability from 10 a.m. through to 1600 hours tomorrow. There's no doubt that we are to see more storms. I've just had another heavy downpour and the radar showing activity to the northeast of Brisbane. Storm probabilities. And this is out to 1600 hours to my. And the flood watch remains in place for the entire area south of Bundaberg to the Queensland New South Wales border. This is the accumulated precipitation. The information is at the bottom of the screen. Each of these uh, images are free hourly. There is a continued risk of heavy rainfall with a level rise it's across the flood watch through to Friday. Here's a look at the BIO's
12 hourly and 24 hour rainfall. We will continue to bring the uh, latest information on the uh, tropical cyclone. Minor flood warning remains in place at this point in time for the upper Brisbane River. Thank you for watching this production of Force 13. For more information about Force 13, you can check us out on all of our outlets. Our website, force13.com, where we are overhauling the website and writing new articles for your reading pleasure. We're also on YouTube, keyword 413. You're probably there already, good chance of that. If you are, hit that like and subscribe button to keep getting updates like this one coming to your mailbox. We're also on Facebook, keyword 413, where we post our updates and keep an eye out for our live coverage on there as well. And we're on Twitter, keyword 413. And if you want to rock our colors like Nathan Foy here, you can go to our store available at store.force13.com or you can contribute to the project directly by way of the Patreon. More information about patronage and the privilege you can get from patronage can be found at patreon.com forward slash force13 and you can reach out to us on Skype at force13 or to me directly on Discord at TREN extension 1375 or you can join our server with our new link at discord.gg forward slash force13.